And you can see the small particles of paint. Probably not from way back there, you can't. But you can actually see the dots of paint coming off. The reason for that is it's drying. That's why it's making those little dots. That won't affect your paint job. Don't worry about it. Once you're clear coating with a dull coat or a gloss coat, that'll blend right into the paint. <clears throat> if you wanted to do a larger area, say you're covering the whole body of your car, plane, whatever, it makes no difference what you're painting, you open it up a little bit, find your distance, which for me is somewhere around here. There we go. And you can see a nice even paint flow. And this isn't a spray can. Yes, you do have to go back over it a few times. Probably a good idea to do multiple coats too. It way. is. It's a great idea to do multiple coats. Generally, you almost have to. Because if you do it in one coat, you're putting the paint on too thick. You're going to lose your fine surface details on your model. Especially some of the higher end kits, you've seen how beautiful the detail is. That's the joy of an airbrush over a spray can. It doesn't fill in all that fine detail on you. It doesn't look like somebody took a house paint and a brush and slopped it on. You can actually save your detail and make it rise, which is what we'll be covering today more than anything. So when you're using a brush, you know, you're, you, they normally say just you know, apply your strokes in one direction, not yes. up and down. Is that the same for this? No. Yeah. The nice thing with the airbrush, as you can see how thin some of the paint is through here, if you actually go back over the other direction, you'll get a more solid color. It'll fill in those gaps, and you won't have a streak, which you may see later on once the paint dries. Me, I generally like to go in a circular pattern on mine. 